Next up is someone who I consider in the very interesting bucket. Um, this is the founder of Tumblr, David Karp. How many of you are familiar with Tumblr? How many of you have a Tumblr, Tumblog? All right. Um, there's been a lot of changes to the service in the last few months. Uh, the service uh, announced uh, just earlier in May that it, you know, it did a 250 million page views a year ago, and now it does 250 million page views a day. So in a year to in a day. It's that kind of growth in one year. Um, and here to talk about that and also how marketers can interact with Tumblr is the founder of Tumblr, uh, David Karp. David? Welcome. Hi, everyone. Um, so hopefully you guys are at least, I didn't see the show of hands before, but I'm hoping you guys are at least a little bit versed in Tumblr and have had a chance to play around with it. Um, a, a lot's been happening on Tumblr, and there's a lot that we're working on these days. Um, there's something that we're really the most excited about, though, which is the fact that it's quickly becoming home to some of the most creative people in the world. And um, just real quick, I'll run you through some slides that s sort of show you why. Um, the first thing that we really cared most about when we were launching four years ago was the ability to post anything to this one thing on the web. So there were all of these tools all over the place to you know, put your photos on Flickr, to put your videos on YouTube, to put links on Delicious. But the idea of having one place where you could collect everything that you cared about um, was really you know, something that I really wanted to do and something that I saw kind of a growing want for on the web. Um, so that was the first step. And the second step was letting you take this place where you were putting all of the stuff that you cared about um, and then letting you customize everything about that page. So that meant um, you could have, you know, my, my blog isn't david.tumblr, it's actually davidslog.com. The theme and the design of that is something that doesn't look like anything else on the web. It doesn't look like anything else on Tumblr. It's like my own design that I created. Um, and there are 20 million blogs that are just as unique on Tumblr today uh, that feature everything from, you know, great original designs that, you know, a, a designer kind of carved out for themselves or something that, you know, a young kid uh, spent hours a day tweaking using all of our built-in tools to build a beautiful site for their photography, that sort of thing. Um, and all of that content then gets aggregated around the Tumblr dashboard, which looks something like this, uh, which is a place that, uh, this is actually something we, we didn't launch with, but kind of found ourselves building um, after we wound up with a spectacular network of really fantastic content. Um, so we started collecting it on this, this uh, page that basically aggregated all of the things that you care most about across the network. Um, that's the page that sort of changed the game for us. That was the thing that, so if you look at our, our traffic breakdown today, we're doing more than 7 billion impressions a month. 6 billion of those is actually going to that dashboard. And um, I'm, I'm happy to report that it looks like we're now a couple weeks away from breaking into the top 25 largest sites in the US. And again, that's largely, largely driven by that dashboard, which is just uh, now, for the average Tumblr user, something they're spending about 62 minutes a day on. Um, so those 62 minutes a day and those 20 million blogs add up to about uh, 6.7 billion page views. These slides are actually a couple weeks old. We just we passed 7 billion uh, this week um, and are still going. Uh, that's about 250 million page views a day. Um, and those the, the breakdown is pretty interesting. So it's 20 million blogs. So those are you know 20 million people who are sharing this stuff online. It's 20 million people draw in an audience of about 80 million uniques per month. Um, those come from all over the place. Interestingly, more of them come from Facebook and Twitter than they do from Google today. Um, so more coming from social media syndication than from just traditional search. Um, and through those 80 million, that audience of 80 million that comes to the network, that visits the network, that's where 90% of our new users come from. So it's not even like a word of mouth thing so much as it is, or, or like you know, viral, whatever. It's really uh, people come to these blogs, they see it, and they aspire to want to create one of these things themselves, which is something that we really, really love. And that's uh, where we're getting 45,000 new users every day, of which uh, more than 80% of them are still using the service a week later, which to us is extraordinary for a publishing service, right? This is like, there's a real burden to like actually creating stuff on the web and actually committing yourself to blogging or whatever the stuff is. And the fact that 85% of our users are, are sticking with it is pretty extraordinary. Um, so with that, I just wanted to jump into a few stories about the way brands are using Tumblr. Um, and with that, like, the most important thing to note is that we didn't create Tumblr with an eye towards brands at all. It was something that you know, we imagined maybe one day would be relevant to us. We thought maybe we would you know, be having meetings with these guys as to like, you know, what they could pay us for. But that was never like, anything on our radar, um, and fr frankly still isn't. Um, although we've you know, given it a fair amount of attention and we've gotten used to having these meetings and answering these questions, um, the best practices are still being written. 
Um, and that's you know, the first thing that we're very eager to tell everybody that we sit down with. Um, the next thing, though, is that they're really not being written by us. This is something where we're looking to people like you to sort of show us the ways that Tumblr can add value to your brands and the types of resources that your brands have that you can bring to Tumblr that actually complement our community and the sort of activity that we're seeing. Um, so let's see. When, when so my, with that, what I'd, I'd say, and this is the same thing that we, we say to everybody we meet, is we really encourage you to, to look at that. Um, and if you don't have, if it doesn't make sense, if after spending time on our community looking at the ways that you know, people are using Tumblr, forget the way brands are using Tumblr today, um, but if, if it's not clear where the stuff that uh, your resources and your interests fit into Tumblr, then look for people on your teams that get it, that have some like sense of, oh man, the work that our team is doing, or the content that we're sitting on, or the stuff that we're excited about, or the type of people that we're trying to get a hold of, they're there somewhere on Tumblr, and I know how we can take advantage of that. Because um, the most interesting uses uh, uh, of Tumblr by brands has been one or two people on the team at a big publisher, at a brand, at an advertising agency, wherever it is, one or two people who really saw something and they had just enough room to play around with it and created something really interesting. So I'm gonna just give you three quick examples of sort of brand's use of Tumblr that we really sort of appreciated. So the first one is just uh, using it as a sort of raw, behind the scenes look into what a particular brand or company, whatever it is, is doing. Because you have the corporate blog, you have the content that they're creating, but when Oscar de la Renta gives Tumblr, or starts the, uh, a blog for one of their interns, and that intern has the app on their phone and is posting photos from behind the scenes of you know, the people who are visiting the office, the projects that they're working on, little quotes from the like, spectacular, um, talented people who work there. That can be a really spectacular thing for not just people who are sort of generally interested in fashion, but for the people who really care about that brand that's like the, the stuff that they're most hungry for. They're already reading the corporate blog. They're, they're looking for the editorial everything. And when you give them the behind the scenes look, they are uh, crazy hungry for that. Um, one, uh, so that's Oscar PR girl dot, Oscar PR girl, yeah, dot Tumblr dot com um, is, is uh, Oscar De Laurentiis example. One other one that was, uh, happened very early that kind of clued us into this use case was College Humor, which is a brand that we really love where they have like uh, just, very hungry, very engaged community that um, really cares about not just the stuff that College Humor puts out, but the people who are creating those videos, who are marketing the stuff, who work there, the people who are mailing out the t-shirts and answering emails. So over a few months, early on in Tumblr, this was three years ago, um, over a few months, that whole company basically signed on to Tumblr and was you know, posting these very raw, very behind the scenes, just mostly personal things, right? It wasn't from the perspective, it wasn't like, um, it wasn't the brand, it wasn't messaging, it wasn't you know, a communications or PR effort, it was really just the people, everyone from like the president of the company down to the interns who were just posting all of this crazy shit that was happening at College Humor. Um, and for those people who aspired to be College Humor interns, for those people who are already spending hours a day watching all of their videos and eagerly awaiting that next thing to pop up in their RSS feed, the ability to go around and follow 30 of the staff blogs was incredibly empowering for them because now all of a sudden they got to feel like they were part of the team. They got to really see the stuff that was going on behind the scenes. And interestingly, what that started to lead to was sort of worship and idolization of people who, you know, the company never would have thought were public facing people. And then those started to turn into shows, those started to turn into other sort of routine things. And they had little celebrities and brands pop up out of this stuff that was just, you know, auxiliary to the business and the, the normal creative efforts of the company. So that's just taking what, you know, the, the normal day-to-day -day activities, giving one intern on the team the, the Tumblr app on their phone and letting them kind of go crazy and share this different perspective um, that can really go a long way. Uh, another pretty different way to apply, actually really any brand, um, would be sort of acknowledging the, the activity that's already going on on Tumblr. So uh, we have, again, 20 million bloggers, most of which aren't, you know, brands, they're, they're individuals who are very excited about something, who are pouring, you know, hours into creating content that they're really, really proud of. Those are generally their photography, their fashion editorials, their journal entries, their uh, creative writing, any number of things. 
Um, and for them to be able to uh, you know, share that and get acknowledged by the community is a really powerful thing, but it takes it to a whole other level when you post a photo of your outfit that you're really proud of and Vogue comes by and reblogs it or Women's Wear Daily comes by and even just likes that post. Because when Vogue likes that post, it's this feeling of holy shit, this thing that I put out there not only got you know, 100 reblogs, 100 likes from across this community, but Vogue actually put their stamp of approval on it. And when Vogue does that, I'll take a screenshot, or I mean something we see all the time is, um, or, and not a phenomenon that we were expecting, but a phenomenon that we see all the time now, um, uh, those users will take a screenshot of that little line that says Vogue liked your photo, blow it up really big, and post that as its own thing to go, holy shit, Vogue liked that thing that I put out there. It's like extremely flattering, incredibly rewarding, and a message that those users will spread. Um, and then all of a sudden you have you know, Vogue liked this, the, the big Vogue logo as a post that's now spreading around the network because people are going, holy shit, this person that we love uh, was like acknowledged by Vogue. That's really pretty freaking cool. Um, and I, I'm out of time now, so I think I'll leave it at that. But yeah, I, uh, I, I guess I'm supposed to run off stage. But uh, I'll be around in the back if uh, I can answer any questions about any of this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you, John. I appreciate you, I appreciate you coming, David. Certainly.